Well, just as Xi Jinping is meeting Vladimir Putin in Moscow, the Japanese Prime Minister Fumio Kishida is making a surprise trip to Ukraine, as Stephen mentioned, to meet the Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky. The trip is the first time a Japanese Prime Minister has visited a region with ongoing fighting since World War II. Well, let's get more of this from our Japan correspondent, Shaima Khalil, who's in Tokyo. Shama, Stephen was taking us through it a little bit from the Chinese perspective, but, you know, what are the optics, really, of these two leaders having visits at the same time? Uh, Xi Jinping in Moscow and now Fumio, Fumio Kishida making a, a surprise trip to, to Kyiv. That's right, Celia. J Japan's leader and China's leader, they're both on the move. And today, they're on the opposite sides of the Ukraine conflict. Xi Jinping is in Russia. Fumio Kishida is in Ukraine. China has been hailed as a friend, as a partner to Russia. And Japan is there to promise unwavering support to Ukraine. China wants to maintain that it's neutral. It has this 12-point uh, step plan uh, to stop the war without any details, really. The, m the most important thing is that it hasn't, n nowhere in that plan has it actually told Russia to um, to pull out of Ukraine. The optics are quite incredible because as this war rages in the West, it has its echoes here in the East. And I think those two leaders landing in those two countries, having talks as the war continues, is quite significant. Um, it is important for the Japanese leader as well. He, until today, he was the only G7 leader not to have visited Ukraine. He was under a lot of pressure from his own party, the Liberal Democratic um, Party, the ruling party, to make that visit to be on the ground before presiding over the G7 summit it, this May. And I think having visited uh, Ukraine, having held talks with Vladimir Zelensky, I think put, puts him in a much solid position uh, when he presides over the G7 summit in May, because, of course, last week he also managed to normalize relations with South Korea. So being able to say um, that he's been able to do that uh, before the G7 summit, I think, is quite important uh, for the Japanese leader. Indeed. Uh, how important is this for Japan's place in the world, the fact that the Japanese leader has landed in Kyiv? It's quite a key time for Japanese foreign policy, isn't it? It is quite a key time for Japanese foreign policy, and and I think the 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 of course Washington is watching this quite closely. Remember, Japan is quite a strategic partner here in the region at a time where the Indo-Pacific is increasingly unstable. There's of course a threat from North Korea with the more frequent missile launches uh, that we've had just on the day of the South Korean leaders um, visit here in Tokyo. They launched um, an intercontinental ballistic missile, but also these concerns about China. Japan is incredibly concerned about a scenario where China could actually militarily uh, get involved in Taiwan. Remember last year they fired missiles um, after Nancy Pelosi's visit to Taiwan. Yes, it's the worst case scenario. You no, know, we're not there yet. But I think there is a real concern that any problem, any conflict uh, or potential conflict in Taiwan will affect, uh, will affect Japan. And so Washington, I think, wants Japan to assert its um, its presence on the world stage um, to form these ties with South Korea, to share intelligence about North Korea, but also this expansion of China, not just in the Indo-Pacific, but that, that, that visit to Russia by Xi Jinping also shows you that it's flexing its geopolitical muscle outside the region as well. Mm, it's a really dynamic time for Japan on the world stage. Th thank you very much, Shaima Khalil, speaking to us from Tokyo. Of course, we're going to be following uh, the uh, visit uh, of uh, Fumio Kishida to to Kyiv very closely throughout the day.